Asalaamu Alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of It's got to be smart Jannah isn't it? Doosh! That's a Jannah Drake He is a hip hop artist But I know for some of you guys watching You're thinking the only Drake I know Is the famous theist scientist Rupert Shell Drake Oh yeah! Oh yeah! God. He has got a beard And now in his latest track he has spoken some Arabic. Mashallah, brother. Yeah, what Arabic has he spoken? Let's see. Arabic ting told me that I look like Yusuf, look like Hamza. Habibti, please. Ana akid, inti wa ana ahla. Now, according to some of the uncles out there now, because he has a beard, because he spoke Arabic, he now qualifies to be called a Hafiz Saab, or a Sufi Saab, or a Molana Saab, or a Sheikh Saab. Saab is just a term of endearment, a term of respect, yeah? So in other words, he's now qualified to be referred to as an Imam or a Sheikh. If we were in a mosque and the Imam hadn't arrived and the uncles looked back and they saw Drake with a thobe, with his beard and he was doing those lyrics, they'd say, you know what, you come forward mate, you lead us in Salah because <laughs> Apparently that's all it takes nowadays. But the rest of us logical people know there's two main reasons why he could have done this. <laughs> Number one is to impress her ex-girlfriend Rihanna who has recently separated from her Saudi billionaire boyfriend Hassan Jamil. Well Rihanna's on the record of course. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be a record without Rihanna would it? Really? I mean, you guys have a rich collabor collaborative history. We have, we have, yes. Or number two, it could be because he's rapped in Spanish, he's rapped in French, he's openly talked about his Jewish faith. You know, it wasn't like on my mixtape cover, it just said like the new Canadian half black Jewish. Like, I didn't even... And now he's rapping in Arabic because, I mean, why not? Yeah, you're appealing to a wider audience and more people are going to listen to your music. And also because Saudi is growing its entertainment industry, and he might want a piece of the pie and show, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I can relate with my Arab fans. And if he gets them excited, then obviously his bank account gets excited as well. Ching ching! <laughs> now, whatever the reason may be, yeah, I could give a monkeys. But the main thing is it got me looking into the history of the use of Arab words, nay, Islamic words, in the arena of rap and hip hop. <laughs> you know what? I was pleasantly surprised. You've got artists like Kendrick Lamar. That's right, he's used it. Nicki Minaj. Jay-Z, he's used it. And one of the legends of hip-hop, Rakim. He's used it as well. And of course, many others. Yeah, but these are just a few you guys may be aware of. I say assalamu alaikum. Now there's two positives in this, yeah? Number one, it actually shows you that Islam has had a positive social influence on the planet, yeah? And hip hop seems to be one of those fields that has acknowledged that. Now the media will have you believe that Islam is only related with terrorism. But if we just look into history, be it the history of rap, be it the history of the civil rights movement, science, chemistry, yeah, medicine, Islam has had a positive impact everywhere. But nowadays if people don't look into history and just rely solely on the media, you will get a warped image. And I have a challenge. Say what? Yo! Those people that say Islam and terrorism, yeah, they go hand in hand. Huh? What? <gasps> well, I will ask you, yeah, before the first not the second, the first Iraq invasion and before the occupation of Palestine. Give me some numbers, give me some statistics of Islam, Muslims and violence. It's very minuscule, non-existent frankly. Woohoo! So from here, the likes of Pape, Karen Armstrong, Sageman, all of these guys tell us it's geopolitical issues and not solely religion. In fact, even your leaders tell you that same thing. ISIL is a direct outgrowth of Al Qaeda in Iraq that grew out of our invasion. That grew out of our invasion, which is an example of unintended consequence. We have totally destabilized the Middle East. It's a disaster. We had this brilliant idea that we were going to come to Pakistan and create a force of Mujahideen, equip them with Stinger missiles and everything else to go after the Soviets inside Afghanistan. And number two, 
it normalizes Arabic. Yeah, nowadays people have been kicked off the aeroplane and other forms of transport because they've spoken Arabic. Some people have thought that it was some sort of war cry or whatever. Say what? Yo! If that does happen, you could say, Oh, I was just singing a Drake song. Yeah, that's right. And also Dr. Jack Shaheen, he noted from the year 1896 to the year 2000, yeah, only 12 movies have depicted Arabs in a positive light. Let's just look at the old uh, Aladdin Disney cartoon. Oh, I come from a land where they cut off your ear if they don't like your face. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. This is a children's cartoon for God's sake. Yeah, if you look in the modern examples, Black Panther shows, you know, uh, Muslim terrorists. Uh, Iron Man does the same thing. Yeah, so this is, I think, a step in the right direction. And also, I would say to you, Drake, you used Arabic to beautify your song, mate, but utilize the energy of learning Arabic and turn it towards the Quran, and you will see how it beautifies your life. Till next time. Woohoo! Salamu alaikum.